Hey everybody, this is Joe Robinson, and in this video I'm going to show you how to play a really easy and beautiful fingerstyle guitar version of the Christmas classic Away in a Manger. Please check the tab linked below, it's free. You can download it completely for free. I hope you enjoy playing this piece. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing, leave me a comment, hit the thumbs up button, and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified when I post new videos. All these things help the YouTube algorithm spread the video to more people. So thank you in advance to anyone who chooses to do that. And also check out my daily exercises course at invisibletechnique.com, which is my course platform. The daily exercises course is a series of really simple, easy, effective exercises that can help you play faster, cleaner, and not have to worry about hitting wrong notes. You'll be able to play with better time, better tone, better feel, better musicality, and your technique will become invisible so that your music will shine through. So do check out that daily exercises course. And if you're already in the daily exercises course, like I know many of my students are, I hope you are finding the time to incorporate them into your routine. Even just 15 minutes, a couple times a week is enough to keep your technique in tip-top shape. So without further ado, let's jump into the lesson. Let's start off with an overview of this arrangement. We're going to play the main theme of the song through three times. It's going to start off in the key of G major in this position. the theme, then we modulate to the key of D in this position. We continue through the theme and then we modulate back to G, but we play it a higher octave than the first time. and it's a very repetitive song so the main theme is really eight bars long but it repeats seven of those bars so it's quite repetitive it's quite simple if you're a total beginner then probably just stick to the first version in G but if you're an intermediate level player then you'll be able to make it through these modulations if you're going to be playing this song with a singer you probably don't want to modulate you probably want to either pick D or G to play the song in but I think this is a really beautiful way to play it as a solo fingerstyle guitar piece. I should also say I'm in standard tuning and I'm not using a pick of any kind with my right hand. I often play with a thumb pick, but in this version I'm just playing with the bare flesh of my thumb and the bare flesh of my fingers to get a nice warm intimate sound. So let's break down each section in a lot of detail right now. Okay, let's start off with this main theme in the key of G major. I'm going to start off with these two notes, which is open D, and then E, which is the second fret of the fourth string, play with the first finger of the left hand. And then we're going to play these two G notes together, the low G, played with the left hand middle finger, and then open G, and we're going to strike the open G with the index finger of the right hand, and the low G with the thumb on the right hand. So those are the first three notes of the song. We play another open G, and then we play an A and a B note, which is second fret of the G string, and then open B. And it's nice to let those notes ring out against one another so we create this sustaining sound. Moving on to the third bar, we're going to switch from that middle finger on the left hand being on the low G note, third fret of the low E string, to the thumb being on that low G note, third fret of the low E string. And the reason we're going to do that is so we can play the melody with a little more ease on the highest strings. And if you don't use your thumb very often, I highly recommend you try it. This is a good use case for getting comfortable with that thumb because it's going to allow us to have an easier time playing fingerstyle guitar in this way because we can play the, the melodies on the higher strings easier. So the third bar of the score is... Okay, so we're playing that open G at the same time as the low G. And then we play another G note. And then open B 
followed by a C note, which is second fret, I'm sorry, first fret of the second string. So the first three bars are. From there, we go to a G seventh chord. Up to a C. So that G seventh is a really cool inversion. It's going to look a bit strange to many of you, I'm sure. So what we're doing is we're playing the low G with the thumb, just like we did in the previous bar. And then the ring finger is on the third fret of the fourth string. We have an open G ringing out. And then we have the pinky on the third fret of the second string. And the reason that's a G7 is we have the G. We have the F, which is the flat seventh. We have the G. And then we have the D note. We don't have a B note, which could be played there. So that's the full inversion of the G7 we're playing. Isn't that strange? <laughs> I'm sure many of you have never played a G7 like that, but it's a great inversion. And the melody happens to be right within this inversion. So we have G, we have a B played with the middle finger of the left hand, second fret of the fifth string, and then we have the ring finger on that F note, third fret of the fourth string, open G, and then the pinky on the third fret of the B string. Please stick with me if you made it this far. It gets easier and it gets very repetitive soon. So then we play that B note, which is kind of like a walking note, a passing bass note, I should say. And then open E. So it's... This is bar four of the score. Once more. A C chord. So I'd recommend just practicing those two bars over and over again. Try and get as much beauty out of the guitar as you can. I like to do these finger rolls where I go. roll the strings like that. So bar five just has these two notes of a C major chord and you all know an open C chord I'm sure. So we're playing that low C and the high C and then we walk down and we play this hammer on from the open B to the first fret of that B string using the left hand. So that fifth bar once more. Simple as that. The first line of the score sounds like this. Moving to an A minus seven chord. And this song is very repetitive, so that entire line is going to repeat on the third line of the score. But the second line comes down here. Then we repeat. So let's look at that second line in detail. We start off with an A minor 7 chord here. And we're really just playing the open A with the thumb on the right hand, the open G with the index finger of the right hand, and then that first fret of the second string with the middle finger of the right hand. And we play that double stop of the G and C notes twice before playing C to D, first fret of the second string, third fret of the second string with the pinky on the left hand, a G chord with the bass note being played by that ring finger. And we do that same double stop on the second and third string with the 
right hand index and middle finger. And then we play open G, open B. Then we're going to come to this move. Now if you don't want to play that bar chord version of an A, which has the pinky on the 5th fret, the ring finger on the 4th fret, and the 1st finger barring the 2nd fret, really on those 3 strings, the 4th, 3rd and 2nd string, you can just play it like this in a regular kind of A shape, however you like to play an A chord. Because all we're going to play is... There's really just three notes. We have A. So we're playing the high octave note on the second fret of the third string. We're playing open A or... It's the same A note. Fifth fret of the low E string. And then E. Second fret of the D string open G, so there's just three notes, A, E, G, and then we play this D suspended chord. I love suspended chords when the tonic note, like the key center of the song, we're in the key of G right now, is within the chord. It just to me it has a really nice texture. So that is fifth fret on the fifth string, fourth fret on the fourth string, open G, and then 3rd fret on the 2nd string. Then we repeat. But let's review that 2nd line once more. Continuing. That's all the same. We just have a bit of a different turnaround at bar 16 where we play this. To the key of D from there. Now if you don't want to play that D shape like that, if you feel like that's a bit of a stretch, because it is a bit of a stretch, you can play it. It's a bit of a simpler version, so I'll show you that just for the sake of it. We're going to play the open D, and then the second fret of the third string. And then open D again, F sharp, 4th fret of the 4th string, and then a G note, low G, and open G played together. From there we go and we play that A and B note, similar to the melody we played on bar 2 of the song. Okay, 2nd fret of the 3rd string, and then open B, before we go to the key of D. So we have a modulation there. So that's the entire first pass through the theme. I'm going to play it nice and slowly, and point out those two different turnarounds at bar 8 and bar 16. So I'll play that section through once more, really, really slowly, and then we'll move on to breaking down the D version of the theme.
Let's move on to playing the theme in the key of D major now. Moving on to playing the theme in the key of D major, it's going to sound like this. So here we have the exact same melody being played and a very simple accompaniment style that's essentially the same as the first time around with a few little bells and whistles of course but we're moving from the key of G to the key of D so everything's in a bit of a different position we're gonna start off there with the second fret of the third string being played, then open B, and then that familiar phrase, which is basically doing a string grab on the chord, so we have just a D major, open D in the left hand, and we're grabbing the thumb on the D, open D string, and then the first finger and the second finger, index and middle I should say, on the second fret and the third fret, of the third and second strings. And then we pick those again, double stop, play open E, and I do that with the ring finger of my right hand. So open, and then second fret of the high E string. That's bar 18. And it's a good idea to just lock those bars into your muscle memory by playing them repeatedly. Etc. <laughs> for a minute. If you can do that for a minute, you won't forget it. <laughs> you're going to sound like a broken record, but you're going to sound like a smooth record when you put it all together. <laughs> okay? So from there we go to bar 19. So we're basically putting an F sharp on the base of this D chord. And we're using our thumb on the left hand to do that. We're just playing the open D chord and then we're bringing the thumb over to play on the second fret of the low E string. And we're playing, playing two, two, and three. Of course, refer to the tab, it's gonna be helpful. And then we play Second fret of the high E string, third fret of the high E string, moving up to a D7 chord. So bar 19 is bar 18, bar, bar 19. Once more. up to this inversion of a D7 chord. So it's open, open D that is, and then 5th fret of the 3rd string, 3rd fret of the 2nd string, then pinky on the 5th fret of the high E string. We play that same figure where we strike the chord with the string grab, and then we play the top 3 notes with the index, middle and ring finger of the right hand. And then we come up here to a B note with the pinky of the left hand, 7th fret of the high E string. And I like to do a slide there. And even a double stop is kind of nice. You go 7 and 7. It's a nice way to do it. So 7th fret of the G string and 7th fret of the high E string. But you could just keep it simple and just go... Coming down to this G chord.
bar 20 to 21. Or both are equally fine. Now we're playing that G chord with the thumb on the left hand and then the index finger on the third fret of the high E string. And then we play that D with an F sharp in the bass again. And remember this is very repetitive, so this will all repeat. That's the first line of the modulated theme. Okay, once more slowly. Moving on to bar 22, E minor chord. Another interesting way to play an E minor. Open E, and then E gets finger to the left hand on the second fret of the fourth string. Open G, and then ring and pinky on the third fret of the second and first strings, respectively. So we're going to use the right hand thumb to play the low E bass note, and then do a string grab on those top three strings of the guitar with the index, middle and ring finger. And then we go third fret to fifth fret, G to A. Then we have a D chord, open D. Just like we played earlier in the song. And then we go D to F sharp, third fret of the second string to the second fret of the first string. And then an E chord. So same deal as before. We play the bass with the thumb on the right hand, and then first middle ring. We play an open B note by itself. And then we do this move, which is four, two, three on the 4th, 3rd and 2nd string and then we play an A chord and you can play an A chord like that which is my preferred inversion which is barring with the 1st finger or you can play an A chord like that or like that however you like to finger an A chord so from bar 22 good news is we've pretty much learnt the entire modulation section now because we repeat from there. I'll replay that second line of this modulated section, bar 22. Continuing. There's where it changes once again. We have a turnaround at the end. So we're just going A, playing an A chord with the left hand, and we're going A. So the melody's in the high E, and then the melody is on the second fret of the third string, A note, to a C sharp, to a D. Simple as that. Okay, so that entire modulated section sounds like this.
there we go back to the key of G, but we play the melody a higher octave than we did the first time. Let's break that down next. If you enjoy the way I teach, I hope you'll check out my teaching platform, InvisibleTechnique.com. It's a little more focused than YouTube, you might say. My daily exercises course is a great way to start with the Invisible Technique platform. You just click the link below and head over and check it out for yourself. It's a series of really simple, easy to follow, easy to repeat exercises, easy to remember also, that are going to really help you play with more conviction, hit less wrong notes, have a better left hand, a better right hand, and better coordination between the hands. So like I said, if you enjoy the way I teach and you think that I can help you, which based on the results I've had from many, many, many students, I'm confident to say I can help you, please check out my daily exercises course if you're interested. Okay, so we've resolved to a D, and then we modulate back to the key of G major. Let's break that down now. So we're going to start off with this D, 3rd fret, the 2nd string, open E, and then we're going to play bar 34, the open G chord, and we're going to play it just like this. Thumb in the left hand on the low G, and then index finger in the left hand on the high G, and we're going to play with the right hand, the thumb and then those top three strings with the index, middle, and ring finger. Play the top three strings twice. And then move up with the pinky from the fifth fret to the seventh fret of the high E string. Okay, that's bar 34, and then bar 35. Thumb on the low B note. Middle finger on the left hand on that G note, eighth fret of the second string. Open G being played as well. And then the index finger playing the B note on the high E string. And then the ring finger playing the C note on the high E string. And it's good to let these notes ring out against one another. So we have bar 34 and bar 35. To bar 36. We're going to play this strange inversion of a G7 chord. Middle finger on the 10th fret of the 5th string and then ring finger on the 10th fret of the 3rd string open B and then pinky on the 10th fret of the high E string It's a bit hard to get this to ring perfectly in tune especially on an old guitar like this This guitar is from 1943 And then we play the pinky on that E note 12th fret of the high E string coming down to a C chord here. We're going to play that with the thumb on the left hand on the C bass note, open G, and then the notes G and C with the left hand on the 8th fret of both the 2nd and 1st string. Then we let the thumb come down one note, and we do this little nice hammer on. Still letting that open G ring out. And we're hammering on from the 7th fret to the 8th fret of the high E string. And we're also striking that 2nd string. Again, this section is very repetitive, so once we've learned these first two lines of this modulation, it just repeats pretty much. So the first line, which we've just learnt, is... Okay, 
Then we go to an A minor chord. It's really an A minor 7, although we're not really playing the 7th. We're just playing open A, and then 5th fret, 5th fret, 8th fret, then 8, 10, to bar 39, which is 10th fret of the 5th string, open G, and then 12th fret of the 2nd string. And then we play open G, and then that high 12th fret of the B string. Then we go to an A chord, like this. Open A, 11th fret, 9th fret, 10th fret. We play the chord, play the open E, and then we come down here. We play the 9 and the 8 on the G and B strings. Then we play a D chord which is low D, open G, and then a high F sharp note in the 7th fret, the D string, or the B string, I'm sorry. So 5, open, 7. From there we just repeat. So I'll, I'll go over that second line of this modulation, bar 38 through 41, once more. Then we're just repeating. So there we just go to a D chord, open D, 11th fret of the G string, 10th fret of the B string, and then open E. And then the 11th fret, F sharp note, E, F sharp, resolving to a G, played within that C major 9 chord. So there we're just going, you can play it like that, which is one of my favorite ways to play it, or you can play it like that. But basically it's just 8, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8. And you can play some harmonics there if you want. It's a bit hard to play the harmonics without a thumb pick of any kind, so I won't break those down, but you can just basically do any embellishments you want. C major 9, and then you just move the bass note down from a C to a B, and then we can play a B13 chord, really nice big version like that, 6, 6, 6, 7, 8, 8, and then you can play this A minor 11, play it there, 5, 5, 5, 5, 8, 7, of course, you can just play a G. <laughs> or you can play... And that's the way I like to finish. On a G bass note, and then using the pinky to play the 5th fret harmonics, which are a little tricky to get, but once you get... Once you get a feel for it, it's a nice way to finish up with some like magic sparkles on the top. So, I hope you enjoyed that arrangement. I hope my instruction was clear and I hope the tab can be helpful. Most of all, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. It's a really beautiful piece of music away in a manger. It really has an emotional resonance for a lot of people. It makes me think of my grandmother who used to play this on the on the piano at Christmas time. So Thanks very much for watching. I wish you all the best. Have a Merry Christmas. And I'm going to go out playing the arrangement through in full.